Hello everyone, I am Bob and this is the Home Bitcoin Immersion Mining Channel. In this build series episode, I'm going to show you how I'm heating both my home and my hot water with my immersion mining setup. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so in my last few design episodes, I've been covering a lot of information on the different options you can use to both heat your house and your water with heat generated from Bitcoin mining. I've got a link above if you want to learn more. And along the way in my build episodes, I've covered my struggles and my successes in getting my immersion mining system up and running. And so in this episode, I'm going to bring all of this together and show how I'm using my completed immersion system to heat my hot water and my home. But before I start, I just want to once again note that I'm not a trained HVAC, hot water, or hydronic system expert. Although I'll be showing you a bunch of changes to my house, which are working pretty well, nothing here should be taken as direction or instruction on what to do with your setup. Treat everything presented here as a starting point or an idea, and always seek out an expert before making any changes to your home HVAC or hot water system. With that out of the way, I'm going to start with my hot water heating. And for my starting point, my house came with a tankless water heater. It's a natural gas-fired, high-efficiency unit and has a maximum power output of 200,000 BTU, which makes it one of the larger units you can get. I'm not sure why the previous owner of my house chose such a large unit. It really is oversized for just hot water use, but it's what I got. Now, according to its operation manual, it can heat water up to an output temperature of 120 degrees to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can only handle water input temperatures of up to 120 degrees. So this puts an upper limit on how hot I can heat my water before sending it to the water heater. My Bitcoin water heating has to stay under this temperature. With this in mind, I looked at all of the different design options for connecting my immersion mining system to my home hot water system. And the design that made the most sense was to use a braze plate heat exchanger to preheat my water before it gets to my tankless water heater. And here it is. Uh, this is a five inch by 12 inch by 20 plate heat exchanger. Uh, I got this from Outdoor Furnace Supply. And as you can see, I got the insulated version of this. And this is really gonna help uh, prevent heat from getting into the room during the summer months. And I've got this installed right after my pump. Uh, the way this works is I've got the glycol water solution being pumped up through one side of the heat exchanger. And then I've got the water coming in from my street flowing down through the other side so that the heat goes from the water glycol solution to my cold water heating it up. From here, the water gets sent over to my tankless water heater and that water heater brings it all the way up to the right temperature. And the glycol water is sent up into my garage, out to my dry cooler, where that dry cooler cools it all the rest of the way down before it's sent back down uh, into my mining setup here. Now this brings up a really important design issue, and that is when you work with a braze plate heat exchanger or any heat exchanger, you want the fluids to go into a counter flow design. Uh, that always makes sure you get the best heat transfer from one fluid to the other. Now when I first installed this, I was a little nervous that the water coming out of the heat exchanger was going to be a little too hot for my hot water heater. And so when I first installed this, I had a mixing valve uh, bringing in a little cool water to temper that fluid down. However, after running it for a bit, I found that the water temperature coming out of the heat exchanger was only a little over 100 degrees, and so I removed that mixing valve because it really wasn't needed. Now, one last thing before I leave my mining room is you'll notice I've got two pipes that are being capped off and another pipe that is going back into my heat exchanger. I'm going to talk about all three of those here in a bit when I talk about my home heating. With my hot water figured out, the next use of my mining heat was to heat my house. And when I started my build, my house had a 60,000 BTU non-condensing natural gas fired forced air furnace with a typical design you see in most homes in the US. Based on this existing HVAC setup, I followed the design info I covered in previous episodes and installed a water to air radiator in the furnace output plenum. This radiator was to be connected to my glycol water cooling loop right above the heat exchanger which was heating my water. This ensured my hot water had priority in getting heat from my mining setup. 
Also, in this build, the distance from the cooling loop to my furnace was much shorter than the distance to my dry cooler, and the radiator from my furnace was much smaller than the radiators in my dry cooler. This ensured that the glycol water fluid would preferentially flow to my furnace. And to prevent hot fluid from returning to my miners, I was going to install a zone valve and a thermostatic bouncing valve at the output of the radiator. Here's a few photos of my radiator install, and as you can see, the radiator was a little oversized. I couldn't find one exactly the same side of the existing ductwork, and so I had to adapt the ducting to make it work. And you'll also notice I didn't do a very good job of building this here. Instead of removing the old ductwork and rebuilding new duct transitions above and below the radiator, I just attached it to the top of my evaporator coil with some angle stock. I cut and bent the existing ductwork around the radiator and used a ton of aluminum tape to fill those gaps. Now, the reason for this sketchy build was I knew my existing HVAC system was not going to be there for very long. It was well over 15 years old, and the furnace fan had already started to fail. It had only one of its three speeds still working, and so I knew I would have to replace it soon. My goal with this quick and dirty build was to get my Bitcoin heating up and running long enough to show you that it would work. I planned to then rebuild with a new HVAC system when my old system failed. Unfortunately, my forced air furnace failed a little sooner than expected. I got the radiator installed and was starting to route the piping, but before I could complete the build, the fan controller literally went up in smoke. My furnace was dead and not repairable. My entire HVAC system needed to be replaced. Now, this happened at the beginning of March, and I live in Colorado, so I knew I had a few more weekends left in that winter season. I could have panic bought a new forced air furnace and paid whatever it took to get that installed quickly. But fortunately, as I noted in a previous episode, I have a large solar array installed on my house. And so I decided to take my time choosing what type of HVAC system to install on my house and in the meantime, heat my house with a few electric space heaters. Looking back, I'm really glad I decided to heat my house this way because I learned a lot about how much heating my home really needed. The furnace that was previously installed in my house was rated at 60,000 BTU or 17.6 kilowatts. It did a great job heating my home. No matter how cold it was outside, I always had enough heat. But as I showed in a previous episode, these forced air furnaces are made to run intermittently. They turn on and off a few times each hour and can spend most of the time not providing any heat to the house. In contrast, when I heated my house with electric space heaters, they were on all the time. And I found that with only four and a half kilowatts of constant heat, my house stayed fairly warm. There was a short cold snap where I needed to run my gas fireplace for a couple hours to keep things comfortable, but overall, I realized I would likely be able to heat my entire house with my Bitcoin miners if I could use most of the steady six to eight kilowatts of heat they generate. And this is the key to home heating with Bitcoin mining. Instead of using a high-powered furnace turning on and off providing intermittent heat, Bitcoin miners can be run continuously, providing a low-power but constant heat source to keep a home warm. So with all of that in mind, I did still have to pick out a replacement furnace to use as a backup when I couldn't use my mining. Now, in my past episodes on home heating, I covered the two different types of furnaces, forced air and hot water or hydronic systems. I showed how both of these work with Bitcoin heating and covered their advantages and disadvantages, but I left one thing out. There is another option, which is a combination of both of these, and that option is called a hydronic forced air furnace or a hydronic air handler. These aren't that common, but I figured it would be perfect for my house and my goal to heat with Bitcoin mining. This type of furnace is simply a fan, a water to air radiator, and a circulator pump. The way this works is you use a separate boiler or tankless water heater to heat up water. That water is then circulated through the enclosed radiator and the enclosed fan blows air through the radiator and out to the house providing heat. 
Now for this to work, you need the right type of tankless water heater that is built to be compatible with this type of furnace. And lucky for me, the oversized tankless water heater already installed in my house was a perfect match. Now what's really nice about these types of furnaces is that they are much cheaper than a normal natural gas fired furnace and they are super easy to install. Just two piping connections, some thermostat wiring, and one 10 volt power and you're done. No gas connections are needed. Here's a couple photos of my furnace in place with a central air evaporator coil installed on top. I was able to do all the install work myself over a couple days on a weekend. And before I show you how I connected my new furnace to my Bitcoin miner, I just want to give a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the like button below. This will really help grow the channel, telling that all-powerful YouTube algorithm this is good stuff that should be shown to more people like you. So when I was connecting my emergent system to the furnace, I had two objectives. First, miners can fail, shut down, or stop running. Also, I know I'll be taking my miners offline for hardware updates and other changes such as adding overclocking in future episodes. So I need to be able to run my furnace using only my tankless water heater to keep my home warm. Second, when my emergent system is running well, I want to be able to heat my house only with the Bitcoin heat and take my tankless water heater completely out of the loop. After all, the goal here is to maximize the return on my Bitcoin mining. And so this is a diagram of the piping layout I use to connect everything together. As you can see, I'm using the same heat exchanger I use for my hot water, and I have two valves that let me run everything in two different modes. When my miners are up and running, and I only want to heat my home with my emergent system, I can circulate water between the furnace and heat exchanger. The tankless water heater is outside of that loop. On the other hand, if I need to take my mining offline or if my miners are not putting out enough heat, I can change the two valves so that water circulates through both the heat exchanger and my tankless water heater. In this configuration, the tankless water heater ensures the water is always hot enough to heat my home. In either configuration, when I need hot water, the heat exchanger and tankless water heater still work together to provide a constant flow of hot water that is preheated by the heat coming from my immersion mining system. Now, with everything in place, I'd love to show you some performance data, including how much energy I'm using and saving, and how well this system is heating my home and my hot water. But this episode is getting a little long, and it's still really early in this winter season. And although everything seems to be working well, my home is warm and my water is hot, I really want to get into colder days and go through a couple winter storms before I give out real performance data. Also, I want to play with overclocking to see how that can be used to improve my home heating. So you'll have to wait a few more episodes before we get into that data, but I promise you won't want to miss it. Okay, so that's all I've got for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to cover pool heating with Bitcoin. Like, subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes coming your way. And with that, bye.